Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you are enjoying the music. I've tried several different soundtracks and that one's my favorite. So um, you are in for a treat today. We are going to introduce ourselves and then go ahead and get started. I am Audrey Harmon, a State Ag in the Classroom Coordinator, and I'm so glad that you've joined us. I'm Melody Offield, another of the state um, coordinators. Welcome. We are so excited that Joc Jocelyn is going to present for us again today. I learned so much, maybe that I could even do um, some of this on Google Classroom. You've given me hope. Jocelyn, you are a great teacher. Um, I will be manning the chat uh, function today on um, our session. And so if you have questions about Ag in the Classroom, you can post them there. I'll try to get you guys to interact a little bit on there. And that will be my role for today. It's hard to believe this is our last day of sessions. I see some of you have joined us every day and thank you so much. And welcome to the new participants. Good morning, everyone. My name is Emily Agu. I am also uh, Ag in the Classroom State Coordinator, and I went, went ahead and took Audrey's advice, even though it is sunny <laughs> here, and got me another cup of coffee. But anyway, I know it is hard to believe that it's our last day um, of presentations today, but I've personally enjoyed them a ton, and um, anyway, I hope several of the teachers have as well. Um, so what my um, basically role is here today is I am working with the Q&A function. Um, so the Q&A, if you do have any questions for our presenter, be sure and type them um, in the Q&A portion. Uh, we keep an eye on the chat as well, but sometimes questions can get lost. So if you type them there, we can make sure they get answered um, before they disappear. So we appreciate you and thank you so much. All right, and I'm seeing lots of people commenting in the chat box, so that's great. Make sure if you want everyone to be able to see it that you're set to the all panelists and all participants. All panelists we can see, but if you want the other participants to be able to see, uh, make sure you choose that um, setting. I believe it says all panelists and attendees. Um, we, I'm going to apologize, I'm at the church, and so apparently our answering machine is going off right now. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Um, but we're going to let Jocelyn get started, and I also want to let everyone know that we're excited. We have a new part-time uh, curriculum coordinator joining us today. Susan Murray is joining our team, and she's on our um, call today, too, but she's going to be able to help us update our lessons to the new format, so I know everyone will be glad to hear that. And we are going to turn it over now to Jocelyn. Hey guys, my name is Jocelyn Puckett and I am a fifth grade teacher for Edwin Public Schools. I teach math and science and this will be my fourth year teaching. Um, I was introduced to Ag in the Classroom by my mom, Christy Puckett, and she'll actually be teaching a lesson later on. So some of you might get to see her. Um, and so I used to, I remember getting her taking me to an Ag in the Classroom workshop when I was little bitty and we made um, hamburgers out of fabric and felt and it was super fun so I'm really glad that I get to share in that with her now and be on the other side of things and help to share some knowledge with you guys so and um, we're going to use the um, Temple Grandin lesson that you can find on the Ag in the Classroom website and I am going to show you a way that you can digitize that through Google Classroom. If I know some of you are feeling overwhelmed because you're having to change the way that you would normally be teaching things and there's this fear of having to switch to all online learning. And so hopefully some of this will be helpful for you and give you some comfort um, and experience with that. So you actually won't need a class code today. I don't know if any of you are wondering about that. Um, originally I was going to try to have you create this and do it along with me. But since we're online now, I just thought it would be easier if I just demonstrated it for you. And then when you get the replay of this video, you can go back and walk through those steps if you wish to. And that way you're not having to man two screens. So you won't need that. But I am gonna go ahead and share my screen with you and we will get started. Okay, so I'm 
this is that um, lesson that I was telling you about. I just went to Agana Classroom, um, the Oklahoma Agana Classroom page, and I searched for lessons. And this is the lesson that we'll be using today. And so the first thing that we need to do is to create a class. And so I'm gonna go to my Google page here. I've already signed into Google. So I'll go to my menu and then find my classroom icon. And it'll pull up this page for me. I've already had, I've already been using Google Classroom. So I have classes in here already, but if you have not, then this will probably be blank for you. And to create a class, we're just gonna go to this plus sign here and click that. We will have two options. We're not wanting to join anyone else's class right now. We're wanting to create a class. So I'm gonna click on that. And I'm going in the classroom. We can add a section number or a subject or a room number, but for the sake of this, it's not really necessary. And then we just click create. So that's a pretty easy, easy process. And hopefully it'll, oh, there it goes. Okay, so once we're into this, we can customize it a little bit, this banner right here. If we want that to be a theme, um, so if I'm doing something science related, I might click in the math and science, or if I teach an English, English or history class, I might click one of these. Um, so you can, change that. You can also upload your own photo to go in this space. And um, this is also where you can find the class code. The class code is how your students are going to get into your classroom. So they would go to Google Classroom also, and they would not have a create class option. They would just have the join option. They would click that and then type in this code. If you need to display that larger, you just click this little square here and it'll pull it up on your smart board or whatever you need, or if you're sharing your screen and you need to make it bigger. Um, and so that is this page. And we have four tabs here at the top. It automatically brought me into this stream. And you can think of this stream as the, like the newsfeed on Facebook. So this is a place where I can communicate with my class. Um, a tip that I will give you that's really just a preference of mine and not necessary. I actually like to go to the settings in, on my stream page. And I like to change um, the classwork on the stream to hide the notifications. And I like to do that because I like the stream to be reserved strictly for communicating with my kids because the classwork has its own tab and I like to keep them separate, but that's just a preference. And if your brain works that way, that might be a helpful tip for you. Um, and so since we're in the stream, I'm gonna go ahead and announce to them maybe what the agenda is for today. So I'm gonna say, today we will learn about Temple Grandin and it will give you the option to and um, post to multiple classes so I can select more than one class so I don't have to type this out a lot of times in each individual classroom. I can even send it to just specific students, but I obviously don't have students in here yet because I just uh, created it. And so I'm going to go ahead and post that. And so that'll pop up there in our little stream. So that's our stream tab. Um, I'm going to skip over classwork for now because that's where we will spend the most of our time. So I'm going to move on to people. In the people tab, this is where you will see yourself as a teacher. And then you have the ability to add a co-teacher if you need to do that. And you can also add students here. And it will also show your class code here. And that's another way that students can join. And then we have the grades tab. And I don't have any students in here or assignments, but it would pop up just like a, uh, like a grade book spreadsheet where there are students going along the side and then assignments going across the top and then grades filled in there. So that is the grades tab. So we're gonna move on to classwork because- I'm so sorry to interrupt. Oh, yeah. A quick question. Okay. Yes. 
Can students use any email address or does it have to be the school email? I, I do believe it has to be school. I think, um, I'm pretty sure it does have to be affiliated with your, um, like your site. So they might want to, they might have to use, they might have to use the class code option. Um, and I know sometimes you have to kind of, you have to talk to like your site administrator and have them sign up for the education side of it. And it's free, it doesn't cost, but um, it's a little like safer and more manageable, I think for schools that way. And who and whoever has that question, I can contact you after this and we can we can figure that out and talk about that together too. Thank you. You're welcome. So, okay, so we're going to create now. Um, so I'm in the classwork tab and I don't have anything here, but the first thing that I would recommend to you to create would be a topic. So we click create and we have this list of options here and I'm going to create a topic and that the reason why I do that is because it helps me to keep everything nice and organized for my students and even for myself if I'm needing to access something really quickly. And so we think of those of, as like file folders. So I'm going to create a topic and I'm going to call it Temple Brandon because that's what we're talking about today. So I add that. And then it pops up as a little title here. So anything that I choose to put within this topic will publish under, under this. So the next thing that we are going to create is our first activity from this lesson. So I'm going to scroll down. So this is activity one. The first thing that it wants us to do is to watch this video, thinking in pictures and then to discuss what we would think it would be like to think in pictures. And so if I was remote learning and I wanted to create like a discussion post, this is how I might do that. Um, so I'm going to go to create and I'm going to create a question for this. And there are multiple ways to do any of the things I'm going to show you. There's no one specific correct way. I just want to, I'm going to show you some different options that you have. So I'm going to create a question and I'm going to go back here. I'm going to copy this link. And the question is, what do you Do you think it would be like to think in pictures and I can give them instructions if I want them to have a specific word count requirement or a length requirement of any kind or they have to include um, certain vocabulary words or something like that I would type that here um, but I'm also going to click this add button so that I can add the link that I just copied so we're going to paste that and then add that link and it will pop up right there. I can change the option for how they can answer it. Right now it's on short answer, which I think is probably appropriate for this question, but I can also change it to multiple choice if I want to. Um, once again, I can assign it to multiple classes and even just individual students. If you just have one or two students out um, because they're sick and you're trying to send them something, then that might be a good option for you to just send it to specific students. Um, I can change the point value and I can also make it ungraded and I can assign a due date. Let's see, just pick a random day. And then this is the important part since we created our topic and this is regarding Temple Grandin, I'm going to come down and select that as my topic. And here you can, there's some extra options. If you want them to be able to reply to each other, you can leave that on. If you have particularly Omri students, then you might not want to make that an option. And, and then we just save that. And that's our question to get us started with that first activity. The second part of that activity, um, is a vocabulary activity and they use the Freyer model to learn these vocabulary words. And so that looks like this. 
And one way that you might do that is by creating this template and slides and having them type into that. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna go back to our classwork tab here and click create. And this time we want to create an assignment. And within this assignment, let's go ahead and call it, let's just call it vocabulary. Um, within this assignment, I could put the instructions here, um, but the most important thing that I need to do right now is I need to create this, the blank slide. If you had already created this assignment, um, just in slides itself and not through Google Classroom, you would click add and then you could add it from your drive. Or if you had a file already on your computer, you could click file, but we haven't created it yet. We need to do that from scratch. And so I'm just going to click create and I'm going to create a slide. And that's going to put a blank presentation here. And so I can click on that to edit it. So it brings this up for me. I like to start with a clean slate. And so I just like to go in and delete these off the page. And now I'm going to change my background color by clicking on background and can choose any color I want. And I like to give it the appearance that it has a border. So I'm going to draw a rectangle on top of that. And once you draw your shape, you can drag it around until the red lines line up. Oh. And that will tell you that it's in the center. And then we're going to look back at our template because we need it to be divided into four parts and then have the circle on top in the middle. So we're going to do that by going to line. And it will all automatically highlight where the middle is. So I'm going to click there and drag down there. Okay. And then we're going to go the other way with another line. And then I'm going to put that circle on top of that. Or more like an oval probably. And then once again, I can drag it to center it both ways. And then the important thing to know is that when you put shapes onto your slides, it will not automatically create text boxes within those. So you have to go find your text box button and draw those in. And so we want to type definition. And we need another text box. And this one is facts, characteristics, and then another text box, examples, and non-examples. And then we can put our word in the middle. And of course, we can always change the size. I can change the way that it's aligned. You can change the color if you want to. We can change the font. And so that is a template for that. And then I usually go in and I draw text boxes for my kids too. And I might just say type here and we can copy that text box and paste it and then drag it. Jocelyn, sorry to interrupt again, but we have another yeah. question. Are okay. you a Chromebook? Am I using a Chromebook? Yes. No, I'm on my Mac right now. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so that's our template. And now you don't wanna to have to do all of that work again. So what I would recommend doing is going to um, edit and then clicking duplicate and it will make that exact same slide over here for you again. And the only thing you'll have to go back and change is the word. And so Ag in the Classroom, the lesson provides those words for you. And there are quite a few. So you might, you might not want to use all of them. You might want to just choose the ones that you think they're going to struggle the most with. Um, but that's totally up to you. But that might be one way that I create this digitally. Um, you can also add a title slide. I can go in and duplicate this again and just bring it up to the top. So you can move these in any order that you need to. And I'm going to delete off the things that I created here because I want this to be a title slide. Let's see, we can just do that. So. We probably still want our rectangle to be on there. So I can draw, there's no right way to do this, but this is sometimes how I like to do it. Draw another rectangle across this and change it to be black. And then I can draw a text box over the top of that. Um, and then just say vocabulary. Jocelyn. Yes, ma'am. Someone's asking similar question. Would this be feasible for students to do on iPads? Um, yeah, it should be. It's um, everything that's editable on a like on a laptop should be able to. They should be able to edit it on an iPad too. They just their keyboard is different. It's you know touch instead of typing. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm going to make this bigger and I'm going to change the color so we can see it and then I'm going to center it both ways and so that's not super fancy or super pretty but that's a quick way that you can make a title slide and so now we need to actually go in and assign this so let's title it and let's name it We can name it Temple Grandin Vocabulary or just Vocabulary, whatever we want to do with that. And we'll go back to our other tab that we had open. So this says that it's un, um, untitled, but we did title that. It's just not showing up right now. It'll show up when we post. And the important thing that you need to know is this button right here. Right now it just says students can view file. So if you don't change that setting, your kids are only going to be able to look at it. And if you're wanting them to be able to type in it, that's going to pose a problem. So you need to change that setting so that they to make a copy for each student. If you just choose students can edit file, it means that everyone can edit the same file. So everyone's going to be trying to work over the top of everyone else. So the best option when you're sending out individual assignments is to click make a copy for each student because it will assign them their own copy for them to edit. So I'm going to click that and then we have the same options over here. We can assign to multiple classrooms or individual students, change the points, add a due date, and topic. Since we this is a Temple Grandin activity, I'm going to put it under that and then I'm going to assign it. Okay, so that was activity one. Activity two is called comparing inventors. And so this is going to have reading pages just like this. And so what I wanna do with this is 
I'm going to take screenshots of all of the pages that I need to. I think there are five of them. And we're also going to use slides for this, but we're going to use it differently. So there, the way that I take a screenshot on my Mac is I hit a shift command four, and it brings up these crosshairs that you can see here. And that's how I'm going to take a screenshot on my Mac. If you are using Windows, then normally you type in the start, you hit the start button and you search for um, snipping tool. So S-N-I-P-P-I-N-G, snipping tool, and it should bring up the same thing. And you just click and drag over exactly what you want it to take a picture of, just like that. I do that again, shift command four on a Mac. I click and drag over what I want it to take a picture of. Shift command four. And the last one where they have us compare them. Okay, so now that I've taken pictures of the lesson, I'm going to go back to Google Classroom so that I can assign it. So I'm going to create, we're going to create an assignment again. We haven't already created it. Um, and so I need to create a slide. I'm going to title it Comparing Inventors. And we're going to click into this so that we can edit this. So I like to start with a clean slate, like I said. So I'm going to take those off. And we took screenshots of pages that looked like normal sized paper, and it is oriented going this direction up and down. And that is not what our slide looks like right now. So we need to go to file and then go to page setup. And we want to customize the dimensions to be eight and a half by 11. We apply that and now it looks the way that we need it to look. So, um, you can insert pictures into this, but I wouldn't recommend doing that for this. If you insert a picture into this, they're going to be able to accidentally on purpose delete it off of the page. And so I would recommend to click background instead and then click choose image. And then we will browse. Sorry, I'm also a photographer. I'm gonna to go to recents. And so these are all of the screenshots that I just took and they're already in order for me because I took them in order. So I'm gonna start with the first one. I choose that. And it takes its time. There it goes. Uh oh, let's try that again. Background, choose image, browse. Oh, there it went. Okay. Okay. So now it's set as the, the background and I'm clicking all over and trying to drag it and it's not working because I set it as the background image instead of just putting the picture on top of the page. Um, and so now what I wanna do is go to file and then I want to, um, let's see. Oh, sorry, insert, new slide. And then start with that blank again and then go to background, choose image, browse, recents, then just my second picture. Okay. 
And then I would do that with all of those that I took screenshots of, but for the sake of time, unless someone in the comments needs me to show that again, which I'll be happy to do, um, I'll just go ahead and move on. So now this is set as my background image. I can't move it or delete it off of there. And so I can take a text box and draw on top of here. And I might say type here. And then I can copy that box and paste it, drag it to the next place. Just like that. And so that's a way that you can um, digitize a worksheet. Um, this, uh, this won't grade it for you, but if you had a worksheet like this in, in, your, in regular, your regular classroom, just printed, you would have to grade it yourself anyway. So, but if you needed to send this out to your kids virtually, then that's an that's a easy way you can do that. Are there any questions about anything so far? There's not any questions coming in right now, but you're getting lots of great comments. Okay. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. So we need to go ahead and assign that. We need to give it a name. Okay. And we'll go ahead and go back to where we were originally assigning this. And it says untitled presentation, but we did change that. It just isn't showing up right here. And I might type any additional instructions I need to here. And then once again, we need to make a copy for each student so that they can actually edit it and they're not just all trying to work over the top of each other. And then all of the same settings are here. Uh, the most important for me, right, one for me right now is to change the topic to be Temple Grandin. Jocelyn, I'm going to interrupt real okay. quick. Um, somebody had typed in the questions, is there another Google form that would grade it? Uh, yeah, I'm about, um, we're actually going to talk about Google Forms next. So Google Forms is um, the only like content creation thing within this that you'll have the ability to have it self-grade because it is more quiz-like and you can tell it what the correct answer is. The other things like in the slides presentations, it doesn't, it doesn't know what exactly what the kids are supposed to answer. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So we're going to assign that. And so everything we see is being listed under this category. So it's nice and easy for us to find. Um, so the next thing I do want to show you is actually Google Forms. And the next activity here is called Cattle Flight Zones. And it's another reading page with some questions. And so I would recommend to you to do the same thing with this first page to take the screenshot. So shift command four or a snipping tool. And then just snapping a quick picture of that. And then this time I'm going to create um, a form. There are two ways you can do that within here. The quickest way to do it if you're going to make it a quiz and want it to be self-graded is just to click quiz assignment. But if you find yourself clicking assignment and then creating a form, there's one extra step that you'll need to take. And so I'm gonna go that way just in case you end up doing that and being confused. And so we'll title it cattle flight zones. Oh, maybe. And I'm going to click into this form so I can edit it. Now it's not going to pull up like a quiz, which is why I wanted to show you this way. So it's they will be able to submit responses, but it won't grade it for you. So if you want it to be able to self grade, you have to go into the settings and then click quizzes. And this button has to be turned on. So make this a quiz. And there are 
other options you might want to read through. If you want them to be able to see their grade immediately, then you would click this. If there are some short answer responses you have to grade manually, then you might um, click this option, but then we just save that. And then I'm going to attach the picture that I just took to this. I'm going to recents. And then this is my latest picture that I took. Okay. And you see it's out of order, but all of this is able to be changed. So I can drag that up here to the top. And now it's very first. I can title it if I want to, but there's already a title here, so I don't feel like I need to do that. And now I can start putting my questions in. So I'm going to go back to my lesson. Let's see. Here we are. And the first question that they have is, what is the main idea of the Cattle Flight Zones reading page? And so I might type that in here. And for this specific question, it doesn't make sense for it to be multiple choice. So I would go in here and it gives me a list of things to change it to. For this, I think it probably makes the most sense for it to be either short answer or paragraph, depending on how much you think your students are going to write. So I'm going to change that to short answer. Uh, this button right here, you're going to want to be turned on so that they have to answer it. We want it to be required. And then the answer key is here. So if it was a very, very specific answer that they were typing in, you could add that in. But most of the time on short answer, it's something that you're going to have to look at anyway. And then to add a new question, we just go to this plus sign. And it will put one right underneath that. And so we could go back to our lesson. What details support the main idea? And once again, I went ahead and changed it, but we can change that to whatever makes sense for this question and we want it to be required. And if it was something specific, we could add the answer key, but for this one, it doesn't really make sense. Um, and so that's how another way you could take a worksheet and make it digital. And this way, if you, if you found a way to convert it to be multiple choice or like check boxes, then you could have it self grade. And so if you did that vocabulary activity, this might be something you would want to do to create a vocabulary quiz. So you can have the definition of a word here and then have a list of options for them to choose from. And in this case, if I had a question that was formatted this way, then I would want to make it required and then go into my answer key. So I just click on answer key and I can tell it what the correct option is that way and assign it a point value and then click done. And you have to do that on every individual question. So it won't automatically do that. So you have to click in answer key each time and tell it what the correct answer is and then save that. And so then once again, we can go back to our page here and any additional instructions we can add in. We can change any of these things that we need to, but we definitely want to put it under the correct topic. And if you do, let me show you what happens if you don't do that. So if I accidentally assigned it and I forgot to put it under a topic, then it came up at the top here. So it's not filed the way that I want it to, but that's okay. You don't have to delete it and restart. I'm just going to click the three buttons and then hit edit and then go back in and change it. It's super simple. So you're never going to mess anything up super badly. So don't be too scared of it. Okay. And then we have the next activity. 
It's called curved cattle chute. And this is one where they, they take paper plates or other materials and they construct their own cattle chutes. And that would be more difficult to do if you were remote learning. So one option that you might have for that is to go into create, create an assignment. And for this, I might just assign them a, like a blank drawing. And I really don't have to do anything to that except to give them instructions and tell them, I might give it a click in and give it a title, but I don't have to create anything. And I think that that's something, if you're just starting out with Google Classroom, I think that's something that you should utilize is having the kids be the producers of content and not just the consumers, because that's kind of a way for both of you, your, you and your students to get familiar with it and you not feeling like you're just drowning, trying to create digital assignments all the time. So if you just go in and assign something to them that's blank and let them be the creator of the content, then that might be a, a way for you to become more familiar and comfortable with it without being overwhelmed. And so I would title this, let's see, curved cattle shoot. And I would give them the instructions like design a cattle shoot and these are the requirements and all of those things. And then we have the same things over here. We can change the topic to Temple Grandin. I'm going to click into you just to show you kind of like what the students might do when I assign them this blank drawing. So they wanted, they wanted them to design a cattle shoot and there's a video that goes along with this. So you might also attach the video link here so we can add a link and attach the video so they can watch it. But I, I think that they, I want to say that the, the way the lesson goes, they actually want you to um, to have them do it first. I can't remember exactly, but that'll be up to you after you read through the lesson. But once they're in here, they can go to line and there are different connectors and curve shapes. And then there's also this scribble tool where they can just draw whatever they need to draw. So, and they would each have their own because you're going to tell it when you assign to make a copy for each student. And so they all have their own to draw on. So I'll assign that. And then some of the very last activities on this lesson have them design a Western shirt and a Western scarf. And so one way that I might do that is to take a screenshot again, shift command four. And then we go into here. I'm going to create a slide again. Title it. And we want them to have their own copy. I'm going to click on it so I can edit it. We'll start with the clean slate. And since I took a screenshot of it going the other direction, I'm going to change my settings again. So file, page setup, custom. And then we change it to eight and a half by 11. And then once again, I'm going to set it as the background so they can't accidentally on purpose delete it off the page. And there we go. And then they can go in and you go to line and uh, scribble and they can draw terrible heart but they can draw on it, they can change the color, they can change the width of the line. And so then they can decorate it that way. So that might be an option for you to do that activity 
Um, and I think that's mostly all of that lesson. I'm gonna click out of these. And we can go ahead and assign that. Oh, but we didn't do our topic, so we can go back in and change that. Okay. All right. Um, there are a few things I wanna share with you. I went ahead and assigned all of these right now and gave them due dates. But if you wanted to sit down on like a Sunday and you were preparing your lessons for the whole week and you didn't want your students to look at this and feel overwhelmed with all of the things they were going to be doing for that week, you can actually schedule when an assignment goes out. So if I was going to create an assignment, if you go up to this button where it says assign, I'm just gonna type something random here. So assign, instead of clicking assign, you would go to schedule, and then you could actually tell it exactly when you wanted the assignment to push out to your students. And so you could plan like a week's worth of activities and just have one come out every day instead of the students being able to go in and see everything at once. Um, because even though you can go into Google Calendar, your students will have access to this too, but if you click Google Calendar, it will show them um, when their assignments are due, which it's not doing right now, but it should show when all of those assignments are due, but they, they don't always listen to that and pay attention to that. So the scheduling option might be good for you. And then um, Guardian Summary is something that I actually haven't utilized yet, but wanted to make known to you. That's actually a way that parents and guardians can sign up to have notifications sent to them uh, periodically about what has been turned in and not turned in. So that might be very beneficial to you if you are having to do distance learning. And so I wanted to tell you about that. Um, but other than that, that's basically all I have to show you today. Are there any questions? Jocelyn, I'm not seeing any him in right now, but I just want to encourage everybody, if you do have questions, uh, go ahead and type those in the chat or um, in the Q&A. The Q&A is a little bit easier. Jocelyn's got just a little bit more to share. Um, Danny Fisher, if you will please send me your email so that I can make sure that I'm able to send you the recordings next week. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to show you these things. These are just some things that they'll send out to you later on um, where you can get extra help and extra information. So the first one is a link to a website that breaks down things by topic for you. So if you, after you watch this video, which they'll send you the link to this too, but if you're like, I just forgot how to make a, how to create a class, then you can scroll down to this and it has a list of things here and we would find um how let's see how do i create a class in google classroom and then it has a youtube link there or how do i create an assignment and it has a youtube link there so there's 32 videos of kind of how to get started and how to use google classroom and then the next thing is the google teacher center free training courses there for you to take if you want to be like google certified you i believe have to pay like ten dollars to take the test but the actual courses themselves you should be able to do and so that is that one and so then this is yeah i'm going to interrupt real quick because we do have a couple of questions that have come in okay. uh, the first one is what is the class drive folder what is the class drive folder yes let's see I haven't used that a ton, so I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Oh, but it looks like just everything from the class has been put in there. So this is everything we've done today and it's put it all right in there. So it just kind of organizes it in that folder. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Awesome. And then also do you use Google Meets? Have you ever used that? 
Um, we used Zoom for the remainder of the school year, but we're switching to that for this year. So I've used it like once or twice just for faculty meetings, but I haven't, I haven't used it with my kids yet. So, but I, I assume it's pretty similar in function to Zoom, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure just yet. I'll find okay. out soon-ish, probably. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, that's it for now. Just okay. when there's actually one more okay. and they're asking, okay. where did you say to turn on for the parent notifications? Oh, I, I haven't used that yet. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I can figure it out and send it to you. I just learned about it not too long ago, but we can look in settings and see if it says anything. And is that the same as the guardian summary? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So those, both of those questions are the same. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Guardian summaries. So it's there under the general. Yeah. All right. Great. So I hate to catch you off. Oh, no. I hate to catch you off. We're out of time. That flew by. Well, it really did. <laughs> I've watched it both weeks and I learned so much new today. So thank you so much. You did a fabulous job. That's awesome. Her email address is in the chat and then it's also on your screen right now. Um, don't bombard her with emails, but at the same time, she's a great resource. So uh, use her. Don't don't enter the year stressed out and scared yeah. uh, when we have such a great resource here. And again, all of her slides will be made available to you next week, as well as the recording from this week and last week. We're actually going to post both of her videos uh, because they're both fabulous and there's a little bit different information shared. Uh, so we want to make sure that we don't lose anything when we post the recordings. And Jocelyn, you did a great job. I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. Everyone, please uh, join us for our next session. If you haven't been on, we've been having fabulous ses sessions. And the next one is uh, Dr. Shelley Mitchell. And you will for sure enjoy it. And one person saying, could you go back to the resource page for one minute? Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> I just clicked. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, it just came in. We'll do that before um, I close it out. Let's see. Yes, here we go. <laughs> okay. And if you are trying to frantically type those or write those down or take a screenshot, that's what I would say. Do it quickly because um, we're going to close this one out. But if you don't get it done, you will have access to this next week. So thanks so much, Jocelyn. You're Everyone welcome. join us for Shelly's session. Have a good day. Bye, guys.